You know, I wasn't entirely sure if this episode was going to be good or not. Bored. And I will admittedly say that I actually pr pretty much like this episode. And I would pretty much say that this is the best episode of this, of this entire, like, mini... Uh, really wholeheartedly... This is the episode of this short filler arc and i would say short properly but i put that in quotations because it wasn't really short it was longer than <laughs> just because like we just need to get into the actual like interesting stuff which is the board to movie retelling and yeah it's like dragon ball super they're doing another retelling of something that everyone has already basically seen at this point but it's more fucking enjoyable than this filler arc that we got. So, um, the beginning of the episode starts off where it left off last week with Boruto and Shikadai getting onto the train, uh, chasing after the fucking Gecko guy and then Ryogi. Uh, they're on the train, they're talking to each other. I'm pretty sure one of them's trying to do talk no jutsu, but they're not Naruto, so it doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> They're not Naruto, so it doesn't work. Uh, the entire time, Rogi's kind of like not really doing anything. He's kind of just sitting there being a whiny little brat, kind of. He kind of just, just see. In this entire episode, he wasn't really likable. He would he would just like kind of like whined and complained a lot. But there's kind of a good reason as for that. So they kind of just like talk to each other. And nothing really interesting happens until Boruto decides to throw. Uh, shurikens at the two of them and Ryogi actually gets in the way and defends him defends Echo his mask gets torn in half and he actually gets a wound on his shoulder so so that happens uh, they do for some reason they for some reason have a backstory or a back a flashback Jesus a flashback of uh, the, the kind of exposition that they gave for Ryogi's character and that Gekko had saved his life and that's why he's defending him and that's why he's always like kind of stuck by his side so he kind of just screams and complains and says a whole bunch of other shit that wasn't coherently necessary but then he does ice style crystal wall which uh, in a way we've seen something similar with the mirrors from Haku but it wasn't and the reason why I say like the mirror is like Haku, it's because I don't think it was Ryogi, but I'm pretty sure it was um, Gecko, and he basically puts Boruto under Genjutsu whilst the are trapped inside of the crystal wall made out of ice, and Boruto looks into a mirror kind of like reflection in one of the ice crystals, and then he's trapped under Genjutsu, and. It's, it's led to believe that the same thing has been happening to Ryogi since he was a small kid because later on in the episode they, you, you actually see a marking on his hand and it's like almost disappearing away from his hand like it, it almost seems like it's just like kind of like rotting away I guess the, is the word I'm gonna use I don't I don't really know what word I'm trying to look for but it's not completely there like it is on Gecko's hand and it's actually as it is a secret because when he tries to heal his wound, it actually reappears back the way it was. And there was also kind of like a like a flashback kind of like scene where it was actually Gecko who killed Ryoki's parents and was about to kill him. But that didn't happen because uh, Gecko had rewritten his memories of how they were actually supposed to be. And the reason for that is he wanted to, to use Ryoki's powers with ice release. Uh, they kind of turn him into his pawn, and like that's kind of like the whole like thing. That's kind of like the subplot of the episode. Like, Shigadai is trying to say like, "Oh yeah, you're a pawn, but as a pawn, you make the decisions that you want to make in life." And then it's just like, "Yeah, well, mm, whatever, <laughs> whatever, right?" So we have actually a really decent kind of fight scene with Boruto stuck in Genjutsu, and Shigadai, who's obviously trying to defend himself because. Borto is Genjutsu and he sees Shigadai as a 
Byakuya gang members, and he thinks it's it's one of them for some reason, which doesn't really make any sense, but it's Genjutsu, so w whatever, right? Genjutsu sometimes doesn't make coherent sense unless it's coming from an Uchiha member <laughs> for some reason. So, Shigeta knocks Borto out of the Genjutsu. Uh, it was, it's actually kind of funny because when they actually started fighting, Borto throws a punch and lands it on Shigeta. Shigeta actually knocks Borto out of the Genjutsu. He throws a punch back. And he's like, yeah, now we're even. I thought that was, I thought that was kind of funny. So Ryogi sort of ice cards the two of them. They're like, okay, we got to go after the one guy, Gecko, because it seems like Ryogi's also under Genjutsu. So we have to, you know, beat the guy who's putting him under Genjutsu. And it's just like, why don't you just like, like go ahead and release him out of the Genjutsu, which later on uh, after a while of, of a couple of, of a couple of fight scenes so uh ryogi's under genjutsu obviously right and he sees for some reason shikadai as the supposed man that, that killed his his parents not gecko but the actual guy who was shown to have killed him he's like oh you're still alive and then for some reason he kind of just does that and then for some reason the steel that was on his hand does like does, does like a curse mark effect and it like covers up like half of his face which looked cool but it, it was it's it, to me it just i kind of questioned why they did it like that because it wasn't really necessary for them to do it like that but whatever so shikadai is dealing with ryogi boruto is going after the, the gecko guy who's trying to I have something in my mouth ew and Borto's trying to go after Gecko, who's trying to release the front, like, engine part of the train off of the cars. And then for some reason, he gets, like, distracted because... Well, actually, no, there, there's a good reason, because in the window, there was a reflection. So he was trying to not get himself under Genjutsu, so he covers his eyes, and then obviously he gets kicked away. Gecko releases the, the engine from the cars, the train car, cars, and he starts getting away. The, well, meanwhile, the two of them have to, you know, deal with Ryogi, which they do. So Borto does the thing that he does with his Shadow Clones, and he uses some sort of wind style jutsu. I forget what the name of that wind style jutsu is called, but you know how sometimes Borto will use wind style and he'll propel himself really forward, really fast. He does the same thing to Shikadai. Shikadai goes through a whole bunch of like ice release crystal things on the ground in inside of the train cart and, um, and then completely just demolishes Ryogi and then releases him out of the Genjutsu. They're kind of like talking, saying whatever they need, to, they need to say, kind of like character moment stuff. And they're like, okay, well, what the hell are we going to do about the guy who's getting away with the sci scientific research stuff? And then, for, and then out of nowhere, a yellow flash kind of thing just comes out of nowhere, right? And you're like, what the hell was that? And I was like, oh, is that Naruto? And then it comes back again when we actually see uh, Gecko. He's like, oh, this is a one-way ticket to sheer luxu uh, luxuries. I, I don't have to deal with, like, robbing people anymore and stuff like that he's on the track in kcm mode and he just stops the fucking train without without even really so he, sh he, he didn't even have to lift a hand anything with nar i don't know get it for like first away need to stay in kcm to you know, stop the train. He could have just easily done that and simply saved it seems to be uh, really uh, you know the war and stuff like that. So this part in the episode that kind of sets up the plot or a subplot in the Borto movie with uh, the scientific guy whose name I don't remember at the moment. I apologize but he's there in so for like bringing back his scientific ninja tool research and stuff like that and he's like thanking him because it's like oh it's proven that it's valuable that people are willing to steal it and he's thanking Borto for that right and it, it kind of sets up the subplot that you know we're gonna see 
this ninja tool once again once the boruto retellings come back so uh ryogi's in a prison cell i thought that was like kind of funny because he didn't he didn't really like do anything out of his own you know selfish reasons but whatever i guess he did i, did, I guess he did help a lot so he kind of deserves to be there boruto and shikadai kind of have like a little moment and they kind of talk to each other for a little bit and then the episode actually ends and in the previews because of the whole kind of like thing that happened with Iwabe and Metal Lee and Deki, uh, they basically are they're told that they're they have uh, um they're told they have but they can't because of like the whole the whole and they weren't supposed to do what they actually tried to do, which was to stop the Byakuya gang. What they were supposed to do was tell ninja or hire that, yeah, they're like in this certain area in the village or whatever, right? So basically they have to do like this documentary, I guess. I'm not entirely sure what they have to do. Like some sort of like documentaries or some type of shit. Because episode is literally called so I'm not sure what they have to do but essentially next episode is more filler but it it is a more filler of this filler arc that we just got that ended this week so you know at least it's something different so I, I don't know it's not really that much of a problem but we are we are almost almost the board so So, so, which means I have top other than this one that I got on whole board, uh, board, the board, so Shinobi Strike Beta Rant. Uh, like, appreciate that. And it's pretty much it. I I don't really have anything else to add on top of. Uh, I might talk about DLC six or Extra Pack two that came out for Xenoverse two because that did come out yesterday. I might actually make a video uh, talking about all the DLC just because I don't know. But yeah. Also, Persona five the animation is coming out next month in April. So be on the lookout for whenever the first episode airs. I'm going to make a review on it, I'm going to talk about it, and it's going to be really, really, really exciting. So be on the lookout for that, whatever that comes around. I'm going to be watching My Hero Academia soon after I watch uh, a couple other stuff that I need to finish up on, but other than that, uh, I had nothing else to talk about. So that's the end of the video. I hope you guys did enjoy for whatever reason, because my videos are actually typically really bad in my opinion. If you did enjoy <laughs> channel consider hitting the subscribe button if you want to see more videos just like this talking about anime games uh yeah i i don't know what else to, other than to say then hope you guys have a beautiful I'll see you guys in the next one i'm out